Alexander beat Talakov is settled for 2020 with David Alonso having been crowned the winner. But in the final race of the season, there's still plenty at stake here in Valencia. Yesterday, Alonso wrapped up the title in style with a victory at the tight and twisty Ricardo Tomo circuit. But today, he'll face a real tough challenge from a host of riders. The field is deep, they've got nothing to lose, and Alonso has a target on his back over the course of this race. The final race of the European Talent Cup season is about to get underway. And while David Alonso was able to wrap up the title in style yesterday, he'll be out to underscore that with another race victory. Steve English and Kiko Giles bring you the action from the Ricardo Tormo circuit. And Kiko, can anyone stop Alonso today? Well, they tried very, very hard yesterday and we thought they had. But on that run to the line, the Colombian was just able to get ahead of his rivals for the second closest finish of the season. Now with nothing more to play for than pride, the first two in the title are secure. This is going to be a barnstormer. Yeah, in yesterday's action, we saw that it was Alonso able to come through from the middle of the field. It really was. He had a penalty after uh, qualifying. He started down in 15th. That promoted his title rivals onto Van der Gorberg to that front row. And from then on in, there was an interesting dynamic with the number 80 of Alonso trying to find his way through the field. There was a lot of drama, however, at the front. We had the likes of Alvaro Carpe, Fernandez, Tapia, and then this crash. This was a disaster for the rise. That was Morelli. Now he gets a penalty for that. Then there was more incidents down the field, but in all, it was all about the battle at the front. Alonso fighting his way through, and there were the two championship contenders, Van der Gorberg doing what he needed to do, uh, taking his time. There was a massive crash at the front, though. That took out Ortola and Roberto Garcia, who was leading at the time. So a total disaster. Then Dajiro Sacco went down. That took another rider out wide. There was a whole load of chaos. Out front, though, keeping it neat. David Alonso had fought his way up to fourth place before really starting to get the hammer down. Onto the front straight, he got ahead of the number 13. That is Marco Tapia. And then hit the front with a few laps to go. Zonta van der Gorberg following his title rival through. And this was the sort out at the last corner, really. It was all drama. Tapia asking for the power a little bit too much in the closing stages. Alonso keeping his lines, flowing nicely, hitting his apexes, and really, getting the job done. This was the final run to the line. Alonso shoved Van der Gorberg out, slipstream Tapia, and took the win. Like we say, the second closest finish of the season, and that gave him the title. The team were happy, everyone was celebrating, and now he goes into Sunday as the man to beat again. David Alonso able to enjoy the success last night of being able to win the European Talent Cup. It really was a great battle to the line. We should see something pretty similar today as well over the course of this race for the European Talent Cup. You can see the conditions pretty much ideal here in Valencia for this time of year. The start of November, we've seen plenty of weather that's been a lot worse than this over the years in Valencia. So everyone in the CV paddock really are glad to be able to see 27 degrees. Hopefully that's going to be able to hold for next week when the MotoGP paddock comes to town. But uh, right now the focus is on the European Talent Cup. And it's been an exciting season in the European Talent Cup. We've seen over the course of the last few years, Kiko, that it's really has been a good proving ground for a lot of top riders. It has, and it's given us so many champions that we've seen up in the in the Moto3 class with Ethan Guevara. He's left this championship and moved on to great things, and th those things will follow. We've also had Manuel Gonzalez become the youngest ever world champion in Supersport 300. He's gone on to World Supersport itself, and there's plenty more names that could follow this is what well, that <laughs> that is not your pole man i can assure you that's why he's phoned away he doesn't want to listen to us telling him that but the 69 of marcus ruder is your pole man and he was very very combative yesterday yeah marcus ruder missed out on the podium by just eight thousandths of a second yesterday and he'll certainly be expecting to be able to get himself right into that scrap this man roberto garcia lines up second on the grid and uh, garcia was involved in a pretty nasty crash yesterday Kigo. huge high side for him coming out of turn 11 he actually wiped out ivan ortola as well so that was a bit of a problem 
hopefully no such repeat of things today and he'll look to sign off this season on a high and also on the front row of the grid is our 2020 european talent cup winner david alonso alonso had to come from the fifth row of the grid yesterday so should be an awful lot easier for him today he won the opening first four the opening four races of the year he's second in the red bull rookies cup really has been a complete season and yesterday we saw just how good his racecraft is look at his form throughout the year first 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 second second nothing in aragon race one he crashed out then second second back on top yesterday he will take that form through to today it's the last race of this season he just wants to sign off on a high yeah his season's been all about that battle between himself and zonta van der gerberg and uh, van der gerberg showing that he's more than just his father's son he's been really good all the way through this season he managed to pick up an awful lot of race victories he had a good run of form coming into yesterday and i got one message last night from uh, a dutch journalist saying if it ain't dutch it ain't much and tell you what van der gerberg certainly seems that he's got a bit about him he's got the potential that is for sure like we say it's not just the name he really is the real deal i'm lucky yesterday to get on the receiving end of that last turn sort out but for sure fourth this morning in warm-up He's forced on the grid. He'll want to be having a good crack at that top three. Yeah, and uh, certainly for van der Gerberg, he'll have a lot of confidence that he's going to be able to add to his race victories already this season. He's been able to pick up four wins this year, and uh, he'll try and finish off the season in a bit of style. On the second row of the grid, we've also got Ivan Ortola. And Ortola was a very fast starter yesterday and immediately got to the front, Kiko, but then he was involved in an incident. He really was. Uh, Ivan Ortolo, unfortunate to be caught up in that uh, disaster, really. No, no fault of his own. He was right in contention. And down went Garcia. Nowhere for Ortolo to go, apart from over Garcia's motorcycle. Both of them, glad to see them on the grid. It was a hefty impact, not just there, but when they got caught up in the bikes as well. But they're both out there. They're both going to be ready. And Ortola, I think he's feeling worse for worry. He's only eighth in warm-up this morning. Let's hope he can convert something from his starting place. Yeah, for Ivan Ortola, he's been a regular front runner in the European Talent Cup. And uh, he'll want to make sure he can finish off the season in a bit of style. He's the teammate to David Alonso. This is Marco Tapia as well. We saw Tapia at the front of the field all the way through yesterday's race. And uh, he's been able to have five top 10, top 10 finishes this season, Kiko and uh, the 13-year-old kid he's been able to really develop as the year has gone on. It's been his best result of the year, actually. That the second place yesterday, some would argue he should have won it. That was his first podium of the year so far, his only podium of the year. Of course, this is in seventh place, David Royale. Inconsistency a little bit in the last few races, but again, he'll be looking to convert that from where he is on the grid outside the top 10 in qualifying. Uh, in, in warm-up, sorry. I don't know where I got that from. I'm looking at warm-up results. This is the build-up to the HETC race. And this is the next man along, Julio Garcia, the number 49, yet to crack the top three, yet to get in the mix, really. But at the age of 14, he has got so far to go. 12th yesterday, he's had top tens as high as fourth. He'll be looking to make something special from where he is on the grid. Yeah, but a disappointment yesterday for Garcia, but we have seen him inside the top five already this season back in Jerez as well. So he'll be aiming for a repeat of that kind of form through the course of this race. Angel Piqueras, we can see here on the number 18 machine. And uh, for Angel, he really needs a good result today if he's to hold on to a top five place in the European Talent Cup standings. He finished 10th yesterday, Kiko, but he's had a podium this season in Estoril. He's had a podium at Estoril. He'll want to sign off this season the same way he started but chaos really is a star of the future and another star of the future potentially could well be alvaro carpe we've seen him very strong this season in aragon and also he was running inside the top six yesterday as well and he's going to line up next on the grid and certainly want to keep an eye on the number 83 from mercia this is alvaro carpe he's had a podium already this season kiko and he's very confident of being able to add to his result yesterday where he's able to run in the league group. The podium at Aragon in race one, he nearly won it, he nearly beat Zonta van den Gerberg. It's like it changed something in his season, the belief in his own ability now, and he won very, very comfortably in that top six yesterday. Expect some more really good good showings from him in the future but also today yeah another local rider of course only from down in mercy a few hours down the road this guy isn't too local though harrison <laughs> void from uh, queensland in australia he was an asia talent cup podium man at the season opening race in qatar this season yesterday though unfortunately he had that crash keel
He had that crash, but he's been a podium man this season twice in the top three, most recently in race one at Aragon. Will he be able to kind of come back to some sort of form? He's back really in 11th on the grid. This is the 12th man, Alberto Fernandez. Fernandez, of course, from Alicante. He started the season with three podiums in a row. He was able to battle at the front all the way through the course of this season, a podium yesterday as well. Let's see what he can do coming through the, from the, uh, through the field. But at the front of the field, it's all about Marcus Rueda, our pole sitter. The final race of the 2020 European Talent Cup season is just about to start. David Alonso won the title yesterday after coming through from the fifth row of the grid after a penalty in the qualifying session. But today he'll try and match his win from a front row start. With Alonso back on the front row of the grid, that's also knocked Zonta van der Gerberg second in the championship standings onto the second row of the grid. But yesterday we saw Zonta very much able to fight at the front and able to battle it out for the race victory. Steve English and Kiko Giles bring you the action here from the European Talent Cup. Kiko, who's your riders to keep an eye on? You've got to keep an eye on Alonso. He's back on that front row. He'll look to convert it. Van der Goerberg, though, you can't rule him out. He will need to really stamp some sort of authority. He will not want to just leave Alonso as champion. He'll want to make the gap look a little bit more respectable. Not that he's unrespectable at the moment. But he starts fourth. He's in a good position. Further down the field, you can see a whole host of nationalities in this one. French, Italian, American, Canadian even, with Collins there in 33rd. Just as a Brit watch, keep an eye out for Johnny Garnis. He starts 24th on the grid. The number 57 looking to come here full-time next season. But it's all about this man, David Alonso. He's already got the title. Will he be able to sign off his season well? David Alonso, second in the Red Bull Rookies Cup as well. So he'll be in action here next week in that championship. But uh, able to wrap up the European Talent Cup yesterday. He started the season so strong. Four wins in a row. Coming into this weekend, Zonta van der Gerberg on the number 84 had four wins in a row. So they really have been the two riders to keep an eye on all the way through this season. And certainly, Kiko, for someone like Zonta, just goes to show again that talent that's coming through in the, Nether in the Netherlands. We've been able to see it in the Supersport 300 Championship this year, which Jeffrey Bo was able to win that title. And obviously, over the last few years, Michael Vandermark as well on a superbike, we've been able to see that the talent in the Netherlands is starting to come through once again. Exactly. And, it, you know, Van der Goerberg, his father was a, a class act in 500s and throughout his Grand Prix career. So it's about time to get those Dutch uh, riders back at the front. Perfect weather for motorcycle racing. It's 27 degrees centigrade, not Fahrenheit. <laughs> it could have been at this time of year in Valencia, but we're in the warmth of the Spanish sun. 30 degrees track temperature, optimum for these 250cc standard Hondas. Will we see a third different winner of the year? Van der Goldberg, he's won already. We've already got, obviously, Alonso, his title winner. Will we get someone like Marcos Ruda, like Roberto Garcia, who looks very, very competitive yesterday? Will one of them take the chequered flag first? Yeah, the Talent Cup all about rider talent. Everyone out there on identical machinery, the same tyres. It just comes down to what the rider is able to do out there on track, and it really does separate the uh, cream from the crop in this uh, championship. And certainly at this season, as we've seen all the way through, Zonta van der Gerberg, you can see there the 84, the number 80 of David Alonso. They've been the two riders to beat. That's why they're first and second in the championship. But you can see here that it is still a battle for third in the championship standings between Fernandez and Ivan Ortola. There's 15 points separating them. So Ortola does need a really good result. He needs to finish on the podium to have any chance of being able to finish third in the championship standings. Kiko, 17 laps around here. We saw yesterday action all the way through. We did indeed. I'm glad I'm up here in the commentary box and not down there amongst that lot because it's an absolute crazy race. If you've never seen a European Talent Cup race, honestly, sit back, sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Pull the fridge closer because we are going to have an absolute barnstorm here. Four kilometers around this Ricardo Tormo circuit. The pole man has pulled up. That is Marcos Ruda. Will he be able to take his first victory from his first pole position? You can see actually in the 80, 
of Alonso, the number one, looking well. Yeah, Paul Sidder is Ruda. We saw him yesterday very much able to get to the front of the field. 41 is Roberto Garcia, high side yesterday. You can see there an incident further down the field. One rider looks like he's stalled. You can see the marshals just taking his bike off the grid. So that's what's caused this delay at the front of the, in the, in the middle of the pack. We'll keep an eye and see if we're able to see who that rider actually is. But that's going to be the end of his day. These riders at the front, though. Marcus Ruda on pole position. Roberto Garcia second on the grid. And our champion, David Alonso, is on the outside of the front row on that number 80 machine. 17 laps here in Valencia. The flag man at the front gets out of the way. So we're waiting now for the red lights to come on. And now the race starts. 17 laps here in Valencia. Looks like Garcia from second on the grid. Been able to make good starts on the matter. Gerberg on the 84, able to move from the second row of the grid into second position, trying to make sure he's in a position to try and attack down in towards turn one. David Alonso lost a couple of spots on that run into turn one. Ivan Ortola on the 48. He's been able to make some progress. He has indeed, Ruda. Oh, dear me, riders out wide there, all over the place. But it is Ruda, the number 69, who leads Van der Gorbeck. Morani up the inside. He's got to do a long lap in this, I think, after his incident yesterday. Bits of carbon fiber, and that's a mud That's guard. a mud guard that's been taken yeah, off there. So there's one rider that's ran off track through turn two, so clearly contact being made further down the field. At the front of the field, though, you can see that everyone jostling for position now. And at the front of the field, it's still Marcus Ruud on the 69 that's leading this race from Zonta van der Gerberg. You can see even Artola trying to get down the inside on David Real. Real doing a better job in this race than what we saw yesterday. He was taken out in an, in an opening lap crash yesterday. He was indeed, and he's got a good start from where he was on the grid. Just a note on the rider who had a problem on the grid. It was Johnny Garnis, so the curse of the commentator is struck on young Johnny, but he's got away well. I oh, and there's a crasher in the background there, it looked like. Just wait and see if we get a wide shot. Yes, two. Two riders down through that uh, corner onto the back straight. We'll wait and see if we're able to identify either of them. But uh, very easy for that to happen in this corner and the European Talent Cup especially. You come into there, you're breaking on an angle. Very easy to lose the front. Very easy to also have that in a couple of other places around here. That's why it's so good to see David Real with a nice clean move down the inside of Ivan Ortola. One of them was Hugo Milan, the number 44. And the other one, it could have... Well, it begins with a seven. We can't quite see the rest of the number. Three on the inside goes Real. He tried to get up the inside there of the final corner. That was on Roberto Garcia. Couldn't quite execute the move, though. And that is going to allow the number 48 of Ivan Ortola. A double man slipstream. Someone coming into the pit lane. So we've, it's all going off here. On this first lap, there's two bikes. It was Sacco again, Dajiro Sacco, the same corner as he went down yesterday. So Valencia has been around to forget for the Japanese youngster. Number 69, Ruda Lidano at the moment, at the moment ahead of Van der Gorberg and Ortola doing to third. We've seen 69s at the front of the field in Valencia in the past, of course, and uh, Marcus Ruda yesterday very much able to be aggressive in making his moves to stay at the front. You can see for right Ivan Ortola, here. nice and aggressive down the inside is onto Van der Gorberg into turn four. You need a lot of confidence to make that move into four. The right-hand side of the tyre, even for these standard European Talent Cup bikes, still gets quite cold on that on that run into that corner, so you really do need to show complete faith in the front end that it's going to work. That's boding well for, for uh, Artola up there in second spot on the 48 machine. Our championship leader, though, David Alonso, our champion for this season, he's got a little bit of work to do. It looks like he's lost another spot in this lap to what could be Marco Morelli, and uh, Alonso might be down there in seventh spot on the number 80. Well, he's got the title done, and it's a good job he did it now. That's the 54, Al Alberto Ferrandez started this season with three podiums. He wants to end it on the high, but he's only 10th at the moment ahead of Alvaro Carpe, who was running sixth very, very strongly yesterday. Down in 11th, don't know what's gone on, maybe a change in setup that's not gone the right way. But at the front, it is Marcos Ruda again, that number 69 at the front of the field in Valencia, Steve. And it actually looks like the old Nicky Hayden World Superbike Honda delivery. It's quite resplendent. Through on the inside goes David Real. On Roberto Garcia. So Real has absolutely flown up the order. That is one of the Reale of Vintia bikes. Can't quite see who it is on his bum patch. We'll pick that up in a bit. Through comes the 48 of Ortoli. He's going to take the lead from Ruda and Real is going to follow suit. He might even get the pair of them. No, he's not that brave. Up the inside. So it's all change at the front. Yeah, Ortoli doing a good job there to use the slipstream. <laughs> Plenty of other riders, though, using the exit of that corner as well. So we're going to keep an eye on the track limits. David Real able to get down the inside into turn two, a favorite overtaking opportunity. You come all the way back through the gears. You're able to really make sure you can make that block pass as well. This is where Ortoli made his move last time around. Not quite close enough to be able to try and attack back on David Real. And uh, certainly for these races, 
race leaders. This is where you need to just make sure you're able to keep that cool head. You can see there in fourth position, it looks like it's Marco Morelli. He still hasn't taken his long lap penalty, so he's going to have to take it in the next couple of laps. He's been given the notification for that. So <laughs> just on that. cue, he makes sure he runs out <laughs> off of track limits as well on the run through turn six. You can see on the run, though, into seven and eight that Artola is attacking Real. And also we had uh, another rider able to get in that scrap as well, Marcus Ruda on the 69. So these three leaders of this race definitely getting the elbows out with one another. That's going to make sure that the likes of Van der Gerberg, Garcia and uh, the chasing pack are all able to stay right with them. And you can see a big group here. And uh, the 95 of Morelli has not taken his long lap penalty yet. The long lap here costs round about two seconds, two and a half seconds. So he'll drop to the back of this group once he takes the penalty. But with his pace, he should be able to latch back on pretty soon. This group is down to 15th place. And Adrian Cruces, as Ortola has a little look on the inside of Real there, thought better of it. Now he's going to get the run down the straight. Real is providing that massive hole in the air. And every rider will try and get through. That's Morelli's team telling him he's got to take the long lap this time around as it's all changed. David Alonso down to seventh as they all fan out three abreast into turn one. I can't believe that's all going to work. They all sort out and they all hold their own positions. I think that's for the, the safer option. Yeah, plenty of riders running wide there. Morelli was one of them on the 95. So that's twice we've seen him run outside of the track limits and we'll keep an eye on that all the way through this. He still has to take that long lap penalty, as you said, Kiko. So at the front of the field, though, Artola, is he close enough to make the move down in towards turn four? Not quite close enough for that, but Tapia certainly was. We saw yesterday the Tapia on that number 13 machine, very aggressive at different times during the race, but very clean as well. He was just constantly looking to get to the front. We see Morelli keep running wide. If he could run wide at the correct corner and take the long lap at turn 11, that'd be great for him. He'd not actually lose that much time. The team watch on in uh, this belief that the fact that he keeps doing it but not at the right corner there he is 95 behind the 38 now Juan Rodriguez now we haven't really seen much of Rodriguez this year not certainly not this round but he's in that leading group and this will be a great lesson for the number 38 as we will we see Morelli yes he takes it now so Marco Morelli doing what he needs to do he will join the group back and well, yeah, he's about a second behind the number 49. That is Julio Garcia. Yeah, for Morelli, able to take that penalty. Right about two and a half seconds it's costing him. So he's able to at least now try and get his head down, see if he's able to close back onto this group. Big points paying group right now. And uh, at the front of the field, the pace is hot as well. That we're down into the one minute 42s. So very much a fast pace, even though we've had plenty of changes of lead, ch plenty of changes all the way through this order. You can see for Ivan Artola, he's trying to make sure he can use that slipstream, but he's going to come under attack as well from the riders behind potentially. But Artola able to get down the inside of David Real. Nice clean move into turn one. You come back to third gear for that corner very fast. And that's why it's so easy for the riders to run wide on that exit. You could see there plenty of riders running wide, including the likes of Adrian Cruces. So all those riders are going to have to keep an eye on that through the course of this race. Seven laps, Kiko. It's a long time to then have to be on the warning for exceeding track limits. And we've still got 13 to go as the number 13 makes move. That is Marco Tapia. He should have won yesterday. Pipped on the line. He led out of that final corner, but uh, Alonso just about got ahead of him. Alonso coming under attack from Carpe now at turn six. And that's a lovely little move from the diminutive number 83 Spaniard. But he runs wide on exit and the title winner, the champion, comes steaming back through the number here comes the 69. No, not this time. Marcos Ruda thinking better of it. But Tapia looks eager to get to the front, Steve. We saw this yesterday and we're seeing it again today. Ruda and Tapia both really in contention and really looking a little bit shaky as Garcia looks on the inside now. So this is chopping and changing. We've still got 12 laps to go. Yeah, la yesterday's race, Tapia had a small bobble at this point of the final lap, and that's really what opened the door for the likes of Alonso to come through. But uh, Tapia really strong yesterday. He's been good all the way through this weekend and once again able to make sure he's able to come through this pack to be able to fight it out at the front. So keep an eye on the Leopard bike. Keep an eye on that number 13. He's going to have to keep an eye on David Real, though. Real on that 32, trying to get down the inside into the last corner. But look at this group now. You've got Artola on the 48, Real on the 32, the 13, the Tapia, and uh, Marcus Arruda just coming through on the 69. But you can throw a blanket over all these leading riders. And the good news is it's been good, clean fighting for all of them. Garcia down the inside on the 41. He's moved up into fourth position. He came across the line in around about six or seven spots. So he's been able to just get himself into the right place at the right time. And once again, down into turn two, Garcia is able to make that move. The 41 moves 
moves through into third position. There's plenty of other riders just run themselves out wide. Very easy for that to happen through their keeper. That was Tapia and Ortola. Tapia fighting straight back on Ortola's teammate, Alonso. They already drowned the champion Alonso. But out front at the moment, the number 69 of Marcos Ruda doing what he needs to do. We saw him lead quite comfortably yesterday's Carpe. He looks again on the inside. Will he pull it down this time? He does, but not enough because through again comes out. Oh, oh the number Kruschev seventy. That's gone down. I said the American Tyler Jacob Scott's gone down. I think the yeah the seventy. So that looks to me like turn two. Let's have a look. Are uh, we going to be a turn two culprit? Yes, we are. Johnny Garness on the inside there, the number fifty-seven. Oh, we saw his teammate do the same there yesterday. The back end there. He's on the rear brake. He's trying to get the bike pulled down to an apex. The rear end comes down. And Tyler Jacob Scott will have to wait till next season to get back on track in the ETC. Back at the front, it's still at it. Ruda leads Garcia this time. Ray Alley's there in third, fourth place. I think at the moment it's Ferrandez, but that looks set to change. Ferrandez actually looks like he's going to go third any minute. No, not this time. Tapia is completing the top five ahead of Ortola. Yeah, at the front of the field, Ruda still trying to make sure he's able to get his first podium in the European Talent Cup. We've got plenty of other riders with experience of battling it out at the front. We've also got some riders, Kiko, that are coming through for the first time during the course of this season. Still plenty of action left in this race. You can see there for David Real able to get down the inside, used the slipstream well. That's a few times he's made the move into turn one, but runs a little bit wide once again. We're four abreast on the run down in towards turn two. And, ooh, and you can oh see the 54, goodness. very solid sideways there from Ferrandez. He's come through the field very well, though. And the podium man yesterday started the season with three podiums in a row and wants to make sure he ends the season on a similar vein, Kiko. Absolutely. Just at the back of this group, the number 49 of Julia Garcia. He's got a track limits warning. He doesn't have to do anything yet, apart from keep it in between the white lines. That would be a huge help for him as going out wide is Tapia. Tapia is it Van der... Van der Gorberg is way out of this. He's down in ninth at the moment. We saw this yesterday from Zonta van der Gorberg as well, the number 84. That could have actually been van der Gorberg running wide there in the exit of turn six. We saw yesterday that it took him time to really make his progress through the field. You can see for Ferrandez, though, he's got no such issue. Down the inside into turn eight. He hits the front for the first time in this race on the number 54 machine. Ferrandez yesterday was able to finish on the podium and uh, he looked strong all the way through that race. And uh, once again, he's looking like he's got that pace to be able to to get through when he needs to and uh, to make this progress in the opening third of the race Kiko it really is impressive for the number 54. It's very impressive but we've seen his podium pace he's a little bit wide on the green there it shouldn't cost him too much but we see all, we saw at the start of the season three podiums for the first three races we thought Ferrandez would do a little bit better than what he's done he's faded as this season's unfolded now he's leading now he's back in the leading group and he's looking very very cool calm and collected I must say the number 54 but the 69 is going to draft past here. Ruda, is he going to get through before the break of the area? Looks like it. Provided a massive hole in the air for Ivan Ortola. Oh, Who's contact there as well from Ortola yeah. on the run down in towards that first corner with Garcia. There were five wow. abreast and uh, five into one doesn't really go to, into turn one here in Valencia. But uh, Ortola able to still make the move on the run in. Tapia trying to get down the inside as well. Tapia has just been given a warning as well for exceeding track limits. So we need to make sure that number 13 stays between the white lines for the rest of the race. He's been able to Seesaw yo-yo up and down through this group, but uh, certainly Tapia now just behind David Alonso, our champion for 2020, and uh, needs to make sure that he's able to make that progress. You can see Garcia there on the 41. It's all starting to get a little bit more drawn out from these riders. We've seen the pace has been a little bit slow over the last few laps, but maybe now this is when the pace is starting to increase. This is when the group is starting to splinter all the way through. Adrian Cruz says with a track limits warning, the number 10, he's in 11th place at the moment. This lead group, it's not breaking up. We've got one rider tailed off behind. I think it's Julio Garcia because he had to take a long lap penalty. But in general, this is going to be an absolute long time. Whoa, was that coming Tapia, up? Tapia trying Tapia, to get down yeah. the inside into the hairpin there. Here's a replay and uh, we'll wait and see what it's for. This is the instant on the run down in towards the first corner. You can just up. see then the number 41 Garcia is just pulling out. The 48 then has to pull out. He's trying to get back on his line. A little bit of contact, nothing too serious. They're used to that. They've been doing it all season. And then the 48 of Ortola just completely lets the brakes off, pulls it down to an apex, scrubs all his speed off and carries it all the way through to turn number two. This is coming through turn three. This is the 69 Eden Ruder. Look at that pack. It's like a tube of racing smarties, Steve. 
And uh, certainly at the front of the field, it's about who's able to be the smartest rider out there as well. <laughs> right now, it's David Real that's at the front, but look at Fernandez. He is not afraid of that bike moving around underneath him, and he's moving up through the field. And uh, he's been able to get himself up into the race lead. Now, we've also got a track limits warning for the number 41 of Garcia. Garcia just about to get punched out wide there as well. He's lost another couple of spots. He's down in about fifth position there on the green and black bike. And we're coming up to half race distance. And to be getting track limits warning, oh, diving up the inside was Tapio. And he almost took the front end of Garcia there. To get track limit warnings in this kind of battle this early on, it's going to cost you dear if you're not at the front. You can see the Australia bike. That, I believe, could be Morelli fighting his way back through. So Morelli has really got his head down and started fighting through. Not 100% sure, we'll wait for verification. It actually looks like the third, no, it can't be the third. He's one of the Australia bikes anyway, he's right in there. Track limits warning for 83, that's Alvaro Carpe. So everyone's copping a track limits warning, but who's going to suffer a penalty with it with a long lap? Yeah, lots of riders been given those warnings, and uh, in that lead group, you've also got Angel Pequeras, might have been him on the Estrella bike nah. that's uh, in that leading group. But certainly right now, it's Fernandez out in front, but he's under attack from David Real, and then Artola on that number 48, once again, keeping that watching brief, keeping the pressure on Tapia. We know he's been given a track limits warning. He's there in fourth position on the number 13 machine. Yesterday's race, he was able to get to the front pretty regularly. He was always able to be very aggressive on the run into the last corner. You can oh, see him able to go fourth to on. second. <laughs> and a really good move there from Tapia. Let's see if he's able to now use that slipstream to try and attack onto David Real. All of these riders with identical machinery, so it really is just about who's able to get themselves tucked in, who's able to exit the previous corner well. And right now, Tapia is able to exit pretty much everywhere well. You can see he's been able to hold off most of the pack on the run into turn one, but it looks like Ruda on the 69 might have been able to make that move. You can see it looks like uh, Pekeras there ran up wide as well. Lots of these riders already on warnings for exceeding track limits. They've got to be on their best behavior. Otherwise, they're going to be given a ride through penalty. We've seen that already through the course of this weekend. Front running riders. We saw Jose Julian Garcia get a ride, uh, a long lap penalty yesterday for exceeding the track limits in the Moto3 class. So all these riders need to really keep an eye on that. They really do because We've seen in this race, Morelli was in the leading group. He had to take his long lap penalty. That was for irresponsible riding though yesterday when he became a bowling ball down at turn two. But it's cost him dear. He's way down the field. He's 15th. He's about seven seconds behind the race leader, who is David Real at the moment. Second place is Ruda. Now, that is a really good job from Ruda. He is, he's stayed in the top three or four, more or less, this entire race. It's like he's got something coming up later on. Will he be able to be attacking into turn eight, uh, turn 11? No, but Garcia did. Garcia just getting ahead of your champion, David Alonso. I tell you, it's a good job Alonso wrapped this title up, but yesterday we could have had a real big disaster for the Colombian in this kind of fraught, frantic fight at the front. Yeah, and at the front of the field, you can see Marcus Ruda. He's still trying to fight it out for his first podium in the European Talent Cup. We move into the second half of this race. He's certainly in contention for that on the number 69 machine. Oy. And uh, further behind them, everyone just somehow filtering Alonso into that there. last corner. You can see that uh, you've still got Tapia under attack from David Alonso on the number 80 machine. Alonso, of course, did win the European Talent Cup yesterday, and now he wants to be able to try and make sure that he's able to finish off his season in style, but not quite able to make a move on the run down in towards the first corner. Garcia got ran out wide onto the pit exit, and uh, we'll see if he was able to collect that and still be able to stay where he is. The 41, once again, attacking on the run down in towards turn two. He's been able to hold a really tight line through there all the way through this race. He's been able to do that once again. We're seeing another few tracks limit warnings for riders further down the field as well. They're not in this leading group though, but we'll keep an eye and see if anyone does get a penalty. That was Guillaume Blanc who's got that penalty. The Frenchman, he's in 18th, but the top 13 down to Juan Rodriguez. They're all covered by uh, 1.7 seconds. So the top 13 covered by 1.7 seconds. The top six yesterday across the line were all covered by less than two tenths of a second. It's mighty close in the ETC. It really is. As, ooh, I thought Altola was going to let the brakes off on Tapia there. Didn't quite do it, but Alonso did. Alonso did. He got ahead of Piqueras. So Alonso's starting to make moves, and he needs to with seven to go. He can't be mired downfield. 
you know, in uh, about seventh or eighth place. It's, it's where he's been all race. Yeah, but uh, for Alonso, we've been able to see him make that progress as well at different times during this race. He's been able to get himself up into those top three spots. But uh, right now, in a big group like this, he's just been boxed out a little bit. But uh, we know that he's able to box pretty clever all the way through races as well. He's done that throughout the course of this season. It's on to Van der Gerberg. He's still down to the back of this group in 11th spot. Yesterday, he didn't make an awful lot of progress until the closing Whoa. stages. That's whenever he was really able to make his moves. But the big move being made there by Marco Tapia. Still six laps to go, but Tapia is getting the gloves off now at this stage. He picked off two riders in that run into the last corner. Again, we've seen two riders being passed. Oh, elbows out there between Tapia and Fernandez. That's going to allow the Aspar bikes to come through. Oh, oh big and that's a big contact teammates. with Alonso and uh, Ivan Ortolo. And Ortolo, we've already seen of contact on the run into turn one. This time it was with his teammate, the number 80, David Alonso. So is starting to get very competitive now in that middle group of the race leaders. But uh, certainly for Alonso and oh, for Ortolo, no, they did well set up. And it's Van der Gerberg that's gone down. Well, and so easy to lose the front down in towards turn two. Kiko. We've seen it so many times across so many classes. And he's second in the title anyway. He's not going to be caught from where anyone else is. He's on to Van der Gerberg, ends his season on the deck. But he'll be back for next year to improve the number 84 then. He's just, I think he lost the front. I don't think he was helped. We will get a replay of that very, very soon. But he's on to Van der Gerberg. Well, Trudge is off in the gravel. It's been an impressive season from him so far. Here's the replay, Steve. Let's have a look. Oh. Well, okay. a diff different replay, but uh, <laughs> here we go. Here's Van der Gerber. Keep an eye on the left-hand side of the screen. I think it's going to be... Uh, oh, we might have got tangled there. I don't know quite who it is. Might have been with Harrison Void yeah, on the run on through the turn two. Of course, for Van der Gerberg, he's going to be in action next weekend in the Red Bull Rookies Cup, but look at the contact oh, on the run down in towards dear, turn man. one, and that's David Alonso <laughs> and Ivan Ortola. Well, I tell you what, I know we greet with our elbows these days, but I don't think uh, Jorge Martinez Aspar would have liked to see too much of that as Nico Tirol watches on. Six laps to go, we're coming into the final corner, and yes, Marcos Ruda is still leading. David Real there in third place. Fourth uh, in second place. Third is Tapia. Fourth place, at the moment, fighting his way back through the field, is the Aspar bike of Ortole. His teammate is behind him. Is he going to get a clouting down this front straight? We're going to see any time soon as they all fan out. Down into turn one, it looks like, uh, looks like David Real is going to get through, and he does. But Marcus Ruda able to turn that number 69 Honda on a 50 pence piece there through turn one. He's got the run down towards the turn two, but it's Alonso who's coming through, not this time. Yeah, and uh, at the front field, Marcus Ruda able to hit the front. We have seen a uh, track limits warning for David Real as well on the number 32 machine. He's dropped down to fourth spot now, but look at Ivan Artola down the inside of his teammate David Alonso returning the favor of what happened on the run into turn one a couple of laps ago, but the two Aspar riders, second and third position. Marco Tapia up there in fourth position on the number 13 machine, and uh, we still have Alberto Fernandez on the 54 in that leading group as well. Fernandez, we've seen him very well willing to make some moves. This group did start to separate a little bit. We're just seeing that there is a penalty being given out, and that's actually going to be for Adrian Cruces. He's a little bit further down at the back of this leading group. But the first of our leading group that's been given a long lap penalty for exceeding track limits, and Adrian won't be the only rider that gets that penalty. He's going to get his notice when he comes across the line next time around. But Tapia, he's making sure he's taking a short run through that tear-pin turn, and he's been able to get himself down the inside of David Alonso. Runs it nicely wide on the exit as well to make sure Alonso loses momentum, and that's put Tapia up into third position now on the number 13 machine. He's there in third. He's doing what he needs to do. He can see Marcos Ruda has got some pace, and we were saying a few laps ago, Steve, it looks like Marcus Ruder might be having something in the locker as Drew comes the 13 of Tapia. He gets ahead of David Real, I think that was, at the final corner. Four laps to go, all the teams hanging their boards out, getting their riders. I never get this clapping in the fist bump, and it doesn't make them go any faster. They're full chat down this straight. Anyways, they all find out. Fernandez comes through, the number 54 of Alberto Fernandez, and through on the inside goes Alonso as well, gets ahead of Real. Then Ortola back to fifth, Garcia there in about sixth place. But Marcos Ruder doing what he needs to do. He's staying out of trouble. So who comes Tapia? Will he force out? The number 48 of Ortola, yes, he does. Out onto the green paintwork for Ortola, and through comes... Oh, and Fernandez Garcia. there with a slide coming through wow. turn three as well. That's opened the door as well for the number 80 of David Alonso to be able to get down the inside. Fernandez, we've seen so many times during this race that he is willing to be aggressive. He's willing to push hard. Pushed a little bit too hard through turn three that time. He dropped down the third spot. But this leading group all really closing up on one another. We've seen them all, Kiko. 
different strengths in different places. Tampi are very strong into turn two. We've seen some of the other riders like Marcus Ruda out in front able to be very strong in the final sector. Down in towards turn eight and turn nine. This is an overtaking chance, but you really need to be alongside as you come into that break point. You really do. It, and it's vital to get the hard work done on the exit of turn six, actually, to get the speed carried all the way down the straight. Fernandez having a little look. Wow, Tapia, dear me, that almost tagged the back of Fernandez. Tapia almost tapping the rear end of the bike in front of him, pushes out Real. But what I was trying to allude to, look at the lead that Ruda's got. That is about six tenths of a second. And at this stage of the race, Steve, that is vital. We're going to see a replay here. This is the moment for Fernandez that you spotted. Look at our front end went, back end went, leg off <laughs> he held on to it very very well indeed that could have been a disaster especially at this time of the race yeah Fernandez doing well to hold on to that third spot now on this lap he's just behind David Alonso we've got three laps to go Marcus Ruda has opened up a gap of about half a second but with the slipstream on the run down in towards turn one that really can come right down as well you can see already for David Alonso he's been able to take chunks out of that lead for Marcus Ruda so the number 69 still chasing his first ever podium in the European Talent Cup and he's going to have to earn it the hard way in the final three laps but he's been able to get himself to the front all the way through this race and that really is the key thing in these talent cup races if you're able to constantly pick off the riders keep yourself in those top three four positions it really does just show the strength that you have all the way through that's what's interesting for the likes of Tapia as well he lost a spot to Ivan Ortola on the run into turn one he's down in fifth position Kiko but he's been very aggressive in the heavy braking zones he's really been able to hold the tight line and get that bike stopped exactly it's like he's got such good braking strength you know and I think We've not seen the last of Tapia. He's just taken a moment to, to sit back, take stock of the situation, and then he's going to release. We've only got three laps, two and a half laps left to go. We're at turn eight now. It's going to be the penultimate lap next time around. I wouldn't like to be in fifth on the last lap, but going fifth onto the penultimate lap, it is far from the end of the world. But then again, having said that, you've got the title winner in second place, and you've also got a very, very comfortable, consistent race leader out front it's the number six nine of marcus ruda will he be able to stay there with alonso behind him we have seen the colombian david alonso really come on strong in the later stage of the race as he nabbed tapia he ruined tapia's day yesterday will he deny another winner today in this race we've only got two laps to find out as they come onto the straight then yeah, two laps, eight kilometers for these riders to get through, and it really is going to be a case now of trying to set your moves up to make sure you're in the right position. Roberto Garcia on the 41, trying to make sure he's able to move himself up. At the front of the field, though, you've still got Alonso and Fernandez closing right up on Marcus Ruda. It's that gap that Ruda had. It's disappeared now at this stage. Even Ortola, aggressive once again into turn one. We know that he's able to use the slipstream really well. We also know that he's been and another rider running wide. That's Harrison the 29, Voigt. Harrison Voigt. He's done that a few times, so don't be surprised if he gets a penalty after this race. But the lead group really has started to separate itself now this is where we're going to get the race winner from Marcus Ruda doing a good job all the time to be able to keep himself at the front and he's just in front of the two Aspar riders David Alonso our 2020 European Cup winner and then also the 48 of Ivan Ortola Ortola very good at being able to use that slipstream and that could well be the difference Tapia on the 13 Kiko though really strong in the heavy braking zones he really is and that is a, a real strength around here there's a lot of heavy braking zones at the Ricardo Tormo circuit here in Valencia number 77 long lap penalty that is Matteo Volpi the Italian he's only 19th at the moment it doesn't trouble the leaders as through comes Garcia on Tapia that's at turn eight so Tapia going backwards we're just singing his praises about in the breaking zones and now he's gone behind these two Aspar bikes oh there he my comes though, goodness Tapia me. down in the heavy braking zone able to train just dive down dive bomb two riders there as well and uh, Fernandez oh, and the elbows are out there now as well and uh, I think Great the elbows stuff. are well deserved there because Tapia came from a mile back to make <laughs> that move but he was able to make the move but the one thing about it is it's also separated out this group as well and uh, you can see Tapia on the 13th he's now lost a little bit of ground to the leading three our leading three though are Marcus Ruda on the 69 he was the pole setter he's still chasing his first ever European Talent Cup podium finish we've got David Alonso race winner title winner this season and Ivan Ortola on the number 48 machine Ortola's been able to use the slipstream really well already this race is he close enough to try and attack into turn one he's not close enough as Ruda takes that defensive line but that's going to compromise his exit and that could well leave the door open here for Alonso and Ortola's trying to attack down in towards turn two Ruda does a good job to be able to hold them off but this horde is coming Marcos Ruda, he's only got about three 
kilometers left to do. We're on the last lap now, down into turn four. Ortola might help him. He's going to go through on his teammate, almost touches. And that could have been a disaster. Now that has let the first two off the hook. Tapia's coming back through. He's trying to get through on Ferrandez. But out front, I tell you, Steve, Ruda is looking very, very good here. David Real is coming through as well. He's going to run wide, and that's just box Tapia in. Marcos, Marco Tapia, he had great pace, but he just could not get through. It's between Ruda and Alonso. But I've got to say, with that kind of gap in this kind of race, we've got a very, very few passing places left for Alonso and Ortola to get through and get this job done. Ruda looking good. We're coming into the final sector. Yeah, Tapia, he's made the move down into this corner a few times. He gets himself down into 14th, into fourth position now. And uh, certainly for the number 13 of Tapia, that's as far as his progress is going to be. The gap to the race leaders is a bit too much. David Rial is going to try and attack down in towards the next corner. And he should have been able to get down the inside. That's for fourth Ooh. position. But at the front of the field, you've now got Ivan Ortola closing right up on the two race leaders. Marcus Ruda on the 69 leads into the last corner. But is he going to be able to hold that lead. You can see Alonso is able to hold off Ivan Ortola. The run's the line, though. You can use the slipstream in the European Talent Cup. Ruda, he's never had a podium in the European Talent Cup. Is he going to start that with a race victory? He yes. is. The number 69 takes the race victory from the 2020 European Talent Cup champion David Alonso and Ivan Ortola wraps up the podium only one tenth of a second, separating our podium finishers. David Real managed to come across the line in fourth position in front of Alberto Fernandez and Marco Tapia had an act Action-packed race, but he came home in sixth spot. You can see there Roberto Garcia celebrating for his uh, rival, Marcus Ruda. Of course, Ruda, never a podium before, able to pick up his first podium with a race victory. Makes that big step forward. Really impressive stuff from Marcus in this race. Marcos Ruda, you know, from pole position, his first ever front row. He doesn't do things by halves, does he, when it's his first ever? He never had a front row. He took that with a pole. He's never had a podium, and he's taken that with a win. So Marcos Ruda, fantastic job for him. The European Talent Cup finally gets a third winner, and that will stand him in such good stead for next season. Marcos Ruda, whatever he does, the 15-year-old from Palma de Mallorca puts the number 69 back on top. What a fairy tale end to the ETC here at Valencia. Yeah, it's been a great season here in the ETC all the way through. And uh, David Alonso, Zonta van der Gerberg, they might have done the winning at the start of the season, but it's good to come to the final race of the year. And Marcus Ruda claims his win. And uh, we also had Marco Morelli, of course, a race winner earlier in the season as well. But it's been a good year of action in the European Talent Cup. And uh, Marcus Ruda certainly looks like a rider that is going to be able to contend at the front once again in the future. He's 15 years of age, and uh, this is his first ever podium. He comes from then in Mallorca as well. So for the Spaniard, this is going to be a day to remember for him. And uh, you can see there for Alberto Fernandez, it's a day to remember for him as well. Fernandez is able to come across the line and uh, hold on to that third in the championship standings. And uh, it's been a good season from Alberto Fernandez. We've really been able to see him get to the front of the field regularly. We've been able to see him very combative with lots of podiums podium finishes through the course of this season. Of course, started the year with three podiums in a row and had uh, a podium yesterday, but just missing out on the podium today after that last lap scrap. We're just seeing as well, actually, one rider has been given a penalty. It's Marco Tapia has lost another spot after exceeding track limits on the final laps. That should drop him down from sixth position down into seventh position. So Roberto Garcia moves up a spot into a top six finish. And uh, certainly for Garcia, after the incident yesterday where uh, he crashed out of race one. Nice to be able to finish the season off by being in that league group all the way through this weekend. This man's been in the league group all the way through this season. David Alonso able to sign off his season with another podium. Second place. He's not been uh, too used to that over the course of this season. Obviously been able to win the opening four races of the year. Added a fifth in yesterday yesterday's race as well and it really has been a very complete season for him Marcus Ruda though he's able to celebrate with his team down in Park Ferme there as well and uh, that is a massive release of emotion from Marcus after the disappointment of yesterday as well missing out on his first podium by just eight thousandths of a second he's able to pick up his first win by 38 thousandths of a second from this man David Alonso and he really did earn it all the way through that race really impressive stuff from Marcus to be able to constantly bring himself to the front of that leading group. Our 2020 European Talent Cup champion, though, was David Alonso, and uh, he's able to finish his season with another 20 points and another podium. But uh, for Alonso, a little bit outfoxed in that final lap.
Marcus was able to do a really good job to hold off the riders coming behind him, the two Aspar riders. You can see even Artola there on the left-hand side as well. But uh, for our champion, David Alonso, he's able to celebrate then in Park Fermi. And uh, another podium wraps up his season. The European Talent Cup, of course, we've been able to see some real quality riders win this championship over the last few years. Manuel Gonzalez won it in 2017, and then it was Javi Ortigas and Izan Guevara winning it last year as well. So certainly riders with big futures have been able to use this as a springboard for their futures. And it'd be interesting to see what happens with David Alonso going forward. This was the clash between himself and his teammate Ivan Ortola on the run down in towards turn one earlier in the race. We saw that a few times with riders really very close proximity to one another all the way through the uh, the race here as well. 17 laps that came down to the final corner. You could see there for Artola and for the number 80 of David Alonso. They were fighting it out between themselves for second and third place. Tried to use the slipstream, but Marcus Ruda was able to exit really well from that last corner and hold off both of the Aspar riders. And for Marcus, that first race victory, that first podium after his first pole position in the European Talent Cup and his Legolese team can be very pleased with what's been the case during this race. And you can see the celebration there for Marcus when he comes across the line. He got down to Park Fermi, he was still full of beans for that. Let's see what he has to say though. He's down in Park Fermi with Kiko after his first ever win in the European Talent Cup. Marcos Rudy, your first pole, your first victory, and the number 69 is back on top. How do you feel after your first win? I'm very happy for, uh, because the first, the first pole and the first victory for the, this year. I'm very happy. Uh, thank you for my team, for my sponsors, uh, my family. Amazing. And in Spanish? Pues la verdad que estoy muy contento porque este año hemos sufrido bastante. Y la verdad que es eso, estoy muy contento porque desde la pole hemos sabido controlar bien la carrera y al final hemos tirado un poco más y hemos podido sacar un poco de hueco. Muy contento y agradecérselo a todo el mundo. Marcos, the first of many. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Marcus Ruda able to claim that race victory. Here's the story of his race and the race for all the other front runners. We had a massive lead group in the early stages. All points paying positions were in that leading group for the opening half of proceedings before we started to see some of those riders start to separate themselves out. Ultimately, it was Marcus Ruda, David Alonso and Ivan Ortola that came away with the podium finishes here in the final race of the 2020 European Talent Cup season. Marcus Ruda becoming our fourth different winner in the European Talent Cup this season. He was able to hold off David Alonso and Ivan Ortolo by just a tenth of a second separating our podium finishers at the flag. The gap to the next group was just under a second. David Real able to hold off Alberto Fernandez. Roberto Garcia, he was able to profit from Marco Tapia's penalty on that final lap. Tapia exceeded track limits and was given a one-place penalty. Further down the order, Juan Rodriguez rounded out our top 10 finishers and uh, Jacob Don Rolston was our final points paying position.
It's a big field in the European Talent Cup. 40 riders here this weekend in Valencia. And some of these riders have very big futures in front of them. Obviously, David Alonso able to win the 2020 European Talent Cup. And uh, his future very much looks, ver looks bright, Kiko. But uh, these other riders as well. We saw Marcus Rude able to take this race victory, his first ever victory in the European Talent Cup. And he looks strong all the way through the race. He looks strong all the way through the race. And he looked calm. He didn't look erratic. We saw Marco Tapia was all over the place at one point. But Ruda held his own. He held the lines, hit his apexes, hit his markers. And with the wooden spoon, I do not know what that's all about, takes his first victory. I'd say the wooden spoon's a little bit different down here in Spain than it is back home in Ireland and England. But uh, certainly for Marcus Ruda, he's able to use that to beat the opposition today and uh, able to claim that first career victory and it's been a good season in the European Talent Cup. We've also had the highlights being David Alonso versus Zonta van der Gerberg. It's been a, a great season and it's one that we'll look back on I think with um, with great memories. You know we've seen some incredibly close finishes as both races here have been special at Valencia and if this is what we have to come with Alonso, with van der Gerberg and now with Ruda the future is so bright, not just for these stars, but for the class as well. Marcus Ruda, yesterday he missed out on his first career podium by eight thousandths of a second when he finished in fourth position. Today he's been able to convert his first pole position into his first European Talent Cup victory. And uh, really has been a complete weekend for him. And uh, certainly it looks like that could be a springboard for him for the future. He's been fast all the way through this weekend at the final race of the 2020 European Talent Cup. Marcus Ruda, race winner here in the European Talent Cup. David Alonso finished second. He was our European Talent Cup champion this year. And Ivan Ortola able to wrap up his season with another podium finish. It's been a good year in the European Talent Cup and uh, another opportunity for these riders to show exactly how good they can be at class, where it's all really about the rider talent. It's about the rider making the difference with identical machinery out there. We've still got plenty of action to come here in Valencia. We've got the European Moto2 Championship the final race of their season and then also the final race of the Moto3 Junior World Championship. But for these European Talent Cup riders, that's their season finished and it has been an action-packed year for them and especially for our champion, David Alonso. David Alonso on top of the world by a healthy 62 points in the end. Alberto Fernandez does take third. Zonta van den Gerberg there in second. Ivan Ortola, he tried to take third back. He can only manage fourth. Ruda, that late victory propping him up to fifth. Angel Pequeras, Marco Tapia, Harrison Voigt for the Australians there in eighth. And Alvaro Carpe, a star of the future there in ninth. Marco Morelli, Juan Rodriguez, Julio Garcia, Adrian Cruces, Dajiro Sacco. David Real, a race leader in that one, all in the mix. And Colin Vigio as well, Jacob John Rulston, another Australian. There's a lot of nationalities in this, plenty of stars for the future. We saw Hugo Milan crash out early doors. Roberto Garcia, strong end to his season, and number 41 coming on strong. Filippo Farioli, Mattia Volpi, Romeo Sandoval, Noah Detweiler, Philip Ton, and Dean Berta. Just some of the names that are in this championship and Justin Fokker there in, 20 sec in 26. But it's all about the champion and it's all about a new race winner here, Marcos Ruda. Is he the next biggest star to wear that number 69?